Hi, welcome back. Or if you're just joining, my name is Maya and welcome to my channel, Cranley Place, where I'm posting content on scarf style, knot tutorials, and more. Be sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe to be notified of new videos, which I'm publishing weekly. In this video, I'd like to pay tribute to Queen Elizabeth II, who passed away earlier this month, and specifically take a look at her love of Hermes silk scarves. I'll discuss why her background was such a natural match for Hermes in general and their silks, look at a few designs issued especially by the House for the Queen, some recurring themes in her collection, and some vintage Hermes examples for you to channel the longest reigning British monarch. Special shout out to Jane J. Doe for suggesting this topic. Let's get started. Elizabeth herself was a lifelong lover of horses and riding, and in fact, you almost never saw her at one of her much-beloved Royal Windsor horse shows without one of the house's artfully screen-printed cajes as a headscarf. Her love of scarves reportedly traces as far back as the 1940s, with the headscarf becoming a classic fashion staple for attendees of the Royal Windsor Horse Show and part of the Queen's sportier day out and about styling for decades. To give some background, her love of equestrian started at an early age with first riding lessons at the age of three and after receiving her first horse, a Shetland pony named Peggy at the tender age of four. Elizabeth then grew quite fond of and adept at horseback riding. After developing an interest in horses, Queen Elizabeth inherited the breeding and racing stock of her late father, King George VI. The Queen enjoyed numerous wins with her racehorses over the years, earning the champion owner title in British flat racing in 1954 and 1957, according to the Racing Post. This honor went to the owner whose horses had won the most prize money during a season. The Queen and her racehorses continued to enjoy wins throughout her reign, with one of the most recent wins in 2022. In April, Educator, a three-year-old colt bred and owned by the monarch, won the Bet365 Handicap Stakes at Newmarket Racecourse. Queen Elizabeth brought her horseback riding talents into her role as monarch. Throughout her reign as queen until 1986, she rode on horseback during the annual Trooping the Color ceremony. After Burmese, the beloved black mare the queen rode during the ceremony from 1969 to 1986 retired, Queen Elizabeth decided to stop horseback riding in the parade and started attending the event in an open horse-drawn carriage, according to the Guards magazine. She also often attended the Royal Windsor Horse Show, the United Kingdom's largest outdoor horse show each year at Windsor Park. For her Platinum Jubilee, the Royal Windsor Horse Show hosted, quote, a gallop through history, which paid tribute to the monarch's 70 years on the throne through acting and musical performances. While she cared for dozens of horses during her life, there were a few that left a lasting impression on the monarch. In a 2020 feature with Horse and Hound, the Queen's head groom, Terry Pendry, shared several of the Queen's favorite horses, including Burmese, her Trooping of the Color horse, and Columbus, a horse that was sired by Winston Churchill Stallion. An accomplished horseback rider, she continued to ride well into her 90s, often seen in joint jaunts around the grounds of Windsor Castle and her Balmoral estate in Scotland. In October 2021, it was reported that the Queen had to stop her favorite pastime due to some discomfort and episodic mobility problems. However, she was able to return to riding before her death, going for gentle strolls on her fell pony. Notably, the Queen passed her love for horses and horseback riding on to the next generation of royals, including King Charles III and Princess Anne. Princess Anne became the first royal to compete in the Olympics when she rode in the equestrian three-day event at the 1976 Games in Montreal. Following in her footsteps, Anne's daughter, Zara Tyndall, competed in the 2012 Olympics and won a silver medal as a member of Great Britain's eventing team. In 
Dieu et mon droit to celebrate the Queen's Silver Jubilee in 1977 was a reissue of a design by Françoise de la Perrière. Originally issued in 1961, the title literally translating to God and my right, the phrase dates to the time of Richard I, who descended from French ancestry. King Richard reigned over England from 1189 until his death in 1199. He used this phrase to pronounce the monarch's divine right to rule. It was later adopted by King Henry V as the royal motto for the British monarchy coat of arms. On the left side of the shield is a guardian lion wearing the crown of St. Edward, and on the right is a Scottish unicorn. Underneath is greenery, with a thistle, Tudor rose, and a shamrock, representing the kingdoms of Scotland, England, and Ireland. You can still find this coat of arms used on government documents, passports, entrances to British embassies and consulates, as well as coinage. Originally designed in 1972 by the legendary Leila Manchari for the Queen's Golden Jubilee celebration in 2002, Hermes reissued a special edition of Regina, which at its conception was already a tribute to the sovereign. The limited Jubilee edition was issued in a delicate pastel colorway depicting a magnificent bouquet of flowers. To celebrate her 90th birthday in 2016 and her lifelong love of horses, Hermès reinvented a design by Henri d'Orchigny called Tatersal. Originally issued in 1980, the design features four figuring horses adorned with bow-tied head and neck guards and surrounded by a display of bridles. Bearing the inscription, Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth, 90th birthday, 2016, the reimagined 90 centimeter silk twill scarf was issued in a blue colorway. The edition was limited to only 300 scarves, with Hermès donating 100 pounds for each scarf sold to the Queen's Trust, a charity that supports projects encouraging young people to help others. The scarf's official unveiling took place at the Royal Windsor Horse Show on May 11, 2016, and at the time, the scarf was sold only in the UK and its corresponding online store. Then for the Queen's Platinum Jubilee in 2022, Hermès issued another limited edition scarf based on one of the most beautiful collections of horse-drawn carriages in Europe at Landcut Castle in Poland. And in fact, some of the carriage harnesses depicted in the design were created by the House of Hermes, which maintains a close relationship with the museum. Designer Jan Beitlich features 20 horse-drawn carriages and playfully mixes them up, inviting the wearer to fold the scarf to match the correct halves and reassemble the original vehicles. Hermès chose the unique color scheme for the Platinum Jubilee design based on the Queen's preferences and in support of the Queen's Green Canopy, a unique tree planting initiative which invited people across the UK to plant a tree for the Jubilee. This too was only sold in the UK at the time and already prices in the secondary market have skyrocketed since her death. The Queen's own scarf collection was believed to be a mix of vintage pieces as well as custom options, such as the special edition Hermès scarves mentioned earlier. Looking at photos across the decades, certain themes become clear. She tended to wear what I would call classical Hermès, meaning more of the older styles from last century. Let's take a look at some of these themes and examples of styles she was known to wear. Starting first with dogs. The Queen was very well known for her love of the Pembroke Welsh Corgi, and in fact owned around 30 Corgis over her lifetime. It was a dog named Susan in 1944, the birthday gift that started the Royal Corgi lineage when Elizabeth turned 18. The Queen was also a rather adventurous breeder of dogs, creating the world's first Dorgi, that's a mix between a Corgi and a Dachshund. Fun fact, in 2002, for the monarch's golden jubilee, that was her 50th anniversary on the throne, the UK issued a new coin depicting the queen alongside a corgi. Then, of course, 
horse and equestrian. As mentioned earlier, the queen bred horses throughout her lifetime, specifically Shetland, Fell, and Highland ponies. The breeding program she was involved in helped preserve the traditional bloodlines in these native British breeds, making sure they are preserved and enhanced. She also bred and owned several racehorses, and reportedly, Kentucky was one of her favorite places to visit in America, a state well known for its horse racing, among other things. And in June 2022, it was reported that the Queen owned around 100 horses at that time. And last but not least, floral themes. Reportedly, Queen Elizabeth's favorite flower was the lily of the valley. They were included in the Queen's coronation bouquet in 1953 and featured regularly in the floral displays at Buckingham Palace throughout her reign. Buckingham Palace is also arguably one of the best known royal gardens in the world where the Queen planted a tree for each of her four children. Described as a walled oasis in the middle of London, it boasts 325 wild plant species, 30 species of breeding birds, and over 1,000 trees, including 98 plane trees and 85 different species of oak. Other areas of the garden include the 156-meter herbaceous border, wildflower meadow, and rose garden. So there you have it. A bit about Queen Elizabeth II's love for MS scarves, some of the designs specifically issued for her celebrations, and recurring themes in her collection. Please like the video if you enjoyed it and let me know what you think in the comments. In future episodes, I'll share other scarf reviews, nut tutorials, and more, so be sure to hit that subscribe button to be notified of new videos. Thanks again for joining me today. Until next time!